My name is Dan Barbata. I'm with FindWatt.com, and I'm going to talk to you about why you need good product data to be a successful online retailer. I'm going to give you a quick overview of what good product data looks like, and then jump into some common problems that we see with product data and show you how to fix them. For each problem, we'll evaluate the online shopping experience, and then we'll take a look under the hood and look at the data itself. But to start off, what is product data? These are the basic elements of product data. A name or title, a model number, SKU or UPC, a description or details, and specifications or attributes of your products. My job is helping people organize and structure their product data. And the key to doing this is understanding product attributes. So what are attributes? Attributes are all the things that people use to decide which product they want to buy. Brand, type, style, and all these other things are examples of attributes. And here are some of the various names that people give to attributes. Properties, dimensions, and when used in faceted search, facets. The quality and completeness of your attributes is one of the primary ways to evaluate if your data is properly structured. So what does structured data look like? Now this is the kind of format you need your product data to be in. Whether you want to list your products on a comparison shopping engine like Google Product Search, or feed your data to a site search solution, or do a bunch of other things. This is the starting point. The key to structuring your data is product attributes. So if this is good, what's bad? Well, let's take a look at some websites that have data problems. And then we'll look under the hood at the data itself. Here is an example search for radial tires that provides no ability to filter your results. You can't filter by brand, type, size, or anything else. The customer must resort to clicking through 71 pages or try a more specific search. If your website has functional search capability, but you have no way to filter that search, you may have a data problem. And if we take a look under the hood, this is what the data looks like. Just a very simple table with product name, SKU, and maybe a price or description field, but no custom attributes. No brand, no type, no size. This is what we call unstructured data and it needs structuring. Another example is where there are lots of facets, far too many in fact. Color has 35 values, with each variation of blue and beige. It makes it difficult for the customer to navigate such a long list. I mean, I don't know which variation of blue I want. And here's a look under the hood. This data needs to be standardized. And by simply adding another field that groups the colors together, it allows people to compare products based on their key attributes, while still preserving the specific colors of your products. And with attributes, you can always go further. It makes a big difference to people shopping on your site. And a final example, in this search, you're getting 41 helmets. And they have facets to narrow your results, gender and brand. Now the gender facet, aside from mixing age with actual gender, is still very useful and a good idea. But it doesn't add up. You've got eight youth, seven adult, one men's, but what are the other 25? And if we go under the hood, you see that they have a custom attribute for gender, but they're empty cells. We call this accounting for your attributes. And you want to make sure that every product has a value for every attribute, or you risk preventing your customers from finding your products. So how do you fix these problems? Well, I'm going to show you three cases where we encounter different problems, and I'm going to show you how we fix them. Hopefully you'll be able to relate to one or more of these. Dealing with unstructured data can be a bit like putting together a 1,000-piece jigsaw puzzle of sky with no picture on the box. 
And if your data has no structure to it, then a search on your website might look something like that. Here we searched for 10 ohm resistors and got a product list. Not all of these results are 10 ohms, of course, because search isn't always perfect. But wouldn't it be nice if you could just filter your search by only those resistors that were actually 10 ohms? And here's what the data looked like. Everything was just sort of dumped into two description fields. But those description fields contained a lot of good attribute information. I mean, the 10 ohm information is right there. And here's what the data looks like after adding attributes. And there's the 10 ohms. If, you look, if we go back to the user experience, you see that now the customer can search for resistors or go into the resistor category, filter by 10 ohms, and they immediately get a targeted product list of only those resistors that are 10 ohms. That's the value of structured product data. And an important point to make here is even if you think your product data is not good enough, you might be surprised at how much value you actually have. You don't necessarily need to go fetch another source of data, because let's face it, really good sources of product data are pretty hard to come by and expensive. But of course, many of you may have structured data. So what then? Well, this is much better. It's still like dealing with a 1,000 piece jigsaw puzzle, but it's already been started and at least you have the box. In this case, doing a search will return products and what at first looks like a pretty good set of attributes to filter your results. But there are a lot of issues with these attributes, and let me take you through them quickly. You've got 100 feet in two different places. You've got values in the wrong place. In this case, those measurements should really be mapped to amps, not voltage. You've got attributes that need breaking up. In this case, 1 quarter inch belongs in size, and 16 to 14 AWG belongs in wire. You have values that need standardization and you have attributes that need to be combined. I mean, which, which black do I click on? Color or overall color? It's not clear. So things need to be re reorganized here. And very quickly, I'll run you through those same problems in the data. There's 100 feet in two different places. There's values that need to be moved. There's values that need to be broken up and moved. There are the values that need standardization and the attributes that need to be combined. And here is the data after reorganization, everything in the right place. So it started off looking like this, now looks like this. And you can see the difference it makes in the search and navigation experience. But there are more complex situations too. My final example is dealing with complex SKUs. Many of you may have products with multiple variations, or something like a part or accessory that goes with multiple different models. The problem is essentially forcing a three-dimensional situation into a two-dimensional environment. And this can be a real challenge, even for data experts. So here is an auto parts retailer where a search for brake pads brought back 43 results. And each part fits multiple year model combinations. As you can see, this fits attribute, which was a very noble attempt to solve the problem, contains all of that year model information, but it's not very user friendly. I mean, in this case, it's not clear which one to select. If you have a 2002 XJ8, which one should I pick? And here's what the data looked like. You have extra complexity here. This SKU fits a 1969 XJ6 and a 1976 XJS. So the question is, how do you design the data to account for this extra complexity? Well, here's how it was adjusted. The key thing here is understanding the relationship between different variables. And in this situation, breaking out on the right variable and then rolling up on the right variable. In this case, breaking it out on both year and model, 
and rolling it up on skew. And now all is well. The customer can effortlessly find exactly the right part by simply selecting the year and model of their vehicle. So the moral of the story is, get familiar with your data. Understand the effect that data is having on your website. And finally, a little good news, bad news. The bad news is, your data is probably not in the best shape, and you have to do something about it. The good news is, you probably have a lot of value in that data. And once you fix that data, everything will work better. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to send me an email or give me a call. Thank you.